Hello, I'm an old fart. I have a guilty pleasure. I like knives. I'm not an expert or an official representative of anything. I just like knives. Um, as we stay locked at home during the COVID-19 pandemic, you've been visiting me virtually and joining me on a tour through my collection of small folding pocket knives. Today on that tour, we're going to have a look at this knife. Uh, this is a Benchmade bug out full-sized version. Um, a knife that I was aware of for a long time, but I didn't think I wanted one. And, uh, and I was wrong. As I say, I was aware of it for a long time, but you know, in my mind, the bug out was designed to be light. And the way they got to be light was they have these plastic handles. And then not knowing much about it, but just, you know, the idea was well, plastic handle and then a blade. Like they didn't really have liners, I thought. And I'd heard them disparagingly called, you know, plastic knives. I don't want a plastic knife. But it kept coming back into my field of view. Um, there's an amazing amount of aftermarket product available for it. Accessories, screws, scales. And it just kept popping up in review sites and stories. And I thought there must be something going on. There must be something to this thing. Maybe I should pay a little more attention. And the reviews were all positive. And then this version came out. Um, they, they know how to attract me. This is the uh, premium version, which is carbon fiber scales and upgraded steel S9EV. And I thought, okay, I gotta try that. And you know, I should have done it sooner. It is a really nice knife, especially as an ultralight. Uh, by far the best ultralight I have. So formally, this is a Benchmade bug out model 535-3. Uh, the dash three indicates that it's this premium version with the uh, upgraded steel, this 90V, and the carbon fiber scales. Now there's lots of steels available, lots of colors, lots of scale options just uh, from the factory, and then lots more if you look into the third parties that offer customization. Uh, the overall on this knife is great blade, ultralight body, and a reliable axis lock mechanism. So we'll, we'll come back to all those things. Now let's start with the mechanism. So it's a, a dual thumb stud opening knife, which you can slow open, or you can flick open, and an axis lock. Benchmade's tradi standard traditional axis lock works very well. Um, it is running on uh, bronze washers, and uh, it can be set loose enough to drop shut. I haven't done that. I've set it to shake shut. Here we are, shaking. Get it started, finish with my fingers. Because, well, two reasons. First, I don't particularly like blades dropping shut. It just scares me. Um, although this would be quite a safe one. And although I didn't get far enough to have drop shuttiness happen, I got the feeling I would be backing the pivot screw out a long way to achieve that, and it might just seem to be very loose. So, so I decided to keep it here at shake to get started, and then push shut, not at drop shutty. Uh, the size is really interesting for this knife. It is much larger than it seems. So it, it is a big medium-sized knife for a small, large-sized knife. What on earth do I mean by that? Well, at 189 millimeters, it is... I forgot to take the case off my calculator. So it is about exactly... Oh, <laughs> about exactly one pocket calculator in length. Gotta be a little better organized than that next time. Um, comparing it to a few other knives, well, my standard mid-size comparison knife is the Benchmade Mini Griptilian. So as you can see, it is considerably larger than the Mini Griptilian. So how about a large knife? Well, Benchmade 940 is considered large, and it's slightly smaller than a 940. In fact, it wasn't easy to find a knife in my collection that was the same size. I eventually found one, and that's this, the Zero Tolerance 0450 is almost exactly the same size as the ZT. And that was all about length. Weight is a different story entirely. 
This thing is a featherweight. It is amazingly light. It's 57 grams. So the Mini Griptilian, as a comparison, is 79 grams. So despite this being considerably larger, it's 50% lighter. Like the, the difference there is just shocking. This feels heavy with this thing in my other hand. So uh, very light. So it's way lighter than the Mini Griptilian. It is slightly lighter than the Benchmade Valet, which is their small light knife. It's lighter than the Benchmade Proper. The only thing I have that's lighter than this is the uh, Megumi, that little small gentleman's knife that I showed you a few weeks ago, or the uh, the Almar Ultra Light. So this is uh, 57 grams. This is way lighter. This is like 37 grams. But I mean, look at the difference. This is this is a tiny knife, so small as I commented before that it, it feels flimsy. Uh, you know, fine for cutting a piece of string, but I, I wouldn't trust it with serious cutting. Where this is a full-sized serious knife that cuts well. So there's, there's just nothing else like it in my collection for weight. So very interesting indeed. Uh, the blade I like, I like drop point blades, and this is a nice classic drop point shape. The blade is uh, three and a quarter inches, so it's over the three inch limit that matters in some places. Um, so this is a, you know, by that measure, this is a large knife. Uh, this version is uh, S90V steel, stone washed. I like S90V. The, the standard bug out in most of the versions uh, is S30V steel, which is a good steel, but you know, it's maybe showing its age a little bit, but a good steel. But uh, this S90V is just a, a wonderful steel. Like it a lot. Uh, the blade has a small sharpening choil, which uh, combined with the fact that the studs are removable makes sharpening safe and easy. And I, I really appreciate that. The body, how, how did they get it so light? Well, there are liners in there. Can I line up so you can see that? There are liners, but they're just very small, tiny steel liners. Basically, the liners come as far as these mounting screws. So this back two-thirds of the knife is no liner, it's just scale. Um, various scales available, as I said, this particular one is carbon fiber. Uh, you can get a titanium made by a third party, but I, I wouldn't. Um, it's very pretty, but I wouldn't. But that would put weight back on, put it back into the normal category. And of course, what it would achieve is making the knife much sturdier. But, but there are lots of knives that are that size and that sturdy and that weight. I mean, you know, what, why, why this and not that if I'm going to go with titanium scales? So, so I wouldn't go with the titanium personally, but you know, if I ever see them on an embarrassing bargain, I mean, how will I be able to resist? Um, the other thing while we're talking about the mechanism here is the uh, thumb studs and the backspacer are anodized blue on this model. And I like that. I think that's attractive. A little splash of color. A standard, actually no, I shouldn't say standard. There's a clip. It's a, a Benchmade clip. It is a deep carry clip. And the reason I stumbled over standard is not Benchmade's standard clip. It's short. E even though the Mini Griptilian is a smaller knife, whoops, not funny. Even though the Mini Griptilian is a smaller knife, the Mini has a much larger clip. So the tiny clip on this is just another of the many measures that they've done to get the weight down as low as possible. Really neat. And the clip can double side mount. So here it is set for right hand carry. It can go on the other side for left hand carry. And, and like all axis locks, it can't go on the other end for tip down because there's stuff there that would be in the way. Uh, there is a lanyard hole. It's part of the backspacer. So a generous, large lanyard hole. If you cared about lanyards, lots of room there to put fairly heavy cord. And it is completely ambidextrous, being a liner lock. Double-sided stubs, stubs, studs. Identical spacing on both sides. I probably can't flick it open with my left hand, but even I can at least open it with my left hand. And the liner lock is ambidextrous for unlocking, so completely ambidextrous. And for those of you who care, US made. I think they're made in Oregon, if I'm not mistaken. So that's the details. 
Um, let's go some likes and don't likes. Well, what I like about this knife is quite a lot. I, I'm really sorry that I didn't decide to buy one sooner. This is a really nice knife. Um, so, uh, what do I like? The weight, the lightness. You know, seeing the numbers is fine. Uh, but even, even having seen the numbers, I've got to say, every time I pick this up, it surprises me. I pick it up and I go, what? Did it like, did the blade fall off? No, it's all there. My God, that's light. Um, and it, it just disappears in your pocket. You can stick it in your pants pocket and, and literally not know that it's there. This is one of the few knives that I, this is, this is a dumb thing to admit to, but this is one of the few knives that I can put in the pocket of my pajamas clipped onto the side. And it doesn't weigh the pajamas down or bulge. It's just so light that it is really easy to carry. And yet, it is not flimsy. Okay? It's not this little knife. It is sturdy and reliable. It, it actually feels stiffer, sturdier, stronger than some other knives in this category. And I think that's because it's so light that you know, the feeling of sturdiness against the context of the weight just makes it feel incredibly sturdy and reliable. And the other interesting thing is, despite having this ultra light stuff back here, basically all the weight is in the blade, it is still pretty well balanced. Can I do that? There we are. It's balanced very nicely for holding. So I think that backspacer is part of that. It's probably one of the reasons they went with the aluminum backspacers to pull a little bit of weight back here and balance the knife. So beautiful. I like that it's deep carry. Uh, I like the appearance. Uh, first of all, I love these woven carbon fiber scales. I really like that style of carbon fiber with the woven appearance and you get the refraction patterns so that you can see a sort of a three-dimensional effect. I love that. And I like the colored accents. It had a nice little splash of color. I like the blade. I like S90V steel. The blade is a great size, just you know, large enough to be useful for pretty much anything. A nice elegant shape. I love drop point blades. I like the removable studs. I must say, I, I just came in uh, literally a couple of hours ago. Uh, it's recycle day here where I live, and I just came in. This happened to be the blade that was in my pocket when I had to take down a, a whole bunch of cardboard boxes, like a dozen. And this uh, this thin, slim blade cut the cardboard effortlessly. No, no noticeable drag. And now, having cut I mean, like a dozen large cardboard boxes, no noticeable edge loss. The S90V, whoa, that's sharp. The S90V really holds a beautiful edge. Let me just find a piece of paper here. So this is after a dozen cardboard boxes. And it's just you know, a dream to cut with still. Uh, I will say the blade did gum up badly with the tape that was on some of the boxes. Um, so first thing I did when I came back in the house was clean that off with the spritz of alcohol. Comfortable knife to uh, hold and cut with. I like that. It's a full four finger grip. And there's a very slight contouring there that guides the fingers. There's good thumb jimping, so sturdy feel on the back. And the clip is so small that it doesn't pretend present a much of a hot spot. It just sits nicely in the hand. So really comfortable to cut with. Uh, the mechanism is good. I like the uh, thumb studs for opening and closing because you can open it slowly or you can open it fast. We'll come back to why that's a good thing. And the beauty of an axis lock, of course, is that you can unlock it with your fingers out of harm's way. So there at no point in that unlocking did I have to have my fingers in the path of the moving blade compared to, for example, traditional flame titanium frame lock flipper, unlock, the blade is now moving towards my thumb. That scares me. With an axis lock, you're always safe. So I like that. So I like a lot about this knife. Uh, what don't I like? Um, I can really only think of one thing. And it's not, it's not a mechanical thing. And that's this. I, I, now I know they wanted to minimize the material everywhere they could to keep the weight down. And that's why they've done that beautifully. But here's something I don't like. I don't like this weird gap behind the end of the heel of the blade and the body. Like there's, there's a funny wedge-shaped 
open space there. And I think that throws the lines off and I think it's ugly. Now, I guess that was to take you know, a square centimeter of scale material out and reduce the weight slightly more on a lot of others, most other bench maids. The body sweeps up and covers the back heel of the blade. That one, like this one, in this knife, they've cut it down more, probably saved a couple of micrograms, and, and I am impressed at the weight, but I think that's a little bit ugly looking. I would have liked them to just continue that line a little higher. That's the only thing I can think, oh, and there you go. And the occasional misfire. I don't have the thing set quite as loose as I might. Uh, and if I'm not careful, I will get a misfire like the one you just saw there. But as long as I'm thinking about opening it, it is completely reliable. So let's go through my uh, internationally unrecognized <coughs> knife rating systems. First, we'll do NTGK for non-threatening gentleman's knife. And we'll do NT non-threatening first. Uh, so the good news, th this is a really good non-threatening knife. I think the most important thing is that you can open it slowly. You can open it slowly, two-handedly. And by the way, it's quiet when you open it. Uh, you can flick it open, but it's quiet. It's not a smack sound. And very important if you're around uh, nervous people, is you can open it two-handed. So it's, it's possible to open this in a way that does not make your person at the desk next to you say, switchblade. Um, so that's very good for non-threatening. And it has a simple, elegant, non-threatening shape. No uh, tactical decorations, you know, no, no zombie barbs and other weird things. I also think the little splash of color makes it a little non-threatening because it's obviously not trying to be a stealth knife. And I like that. The lightness also helps. As long as I'm the only person holding it, it doesn't make much difference. But, but if I hand this to a desk mate because they want to borrow a knife, this is so light that they just go, ooh, this, you know, this, is a, this is an office implement. This isn't, you know, Crocodile Dundee's Bowie knife. Uh, the bad under non-threatening is it's a little big. You know, the three and a, whatever it was, three and a quarter inch blade, that's a little large to pull out in a casual office environment. But I'll give it an E as non-threatening. Uh, as a gentleman's knife, um, it is uh, it's a really nice gentleman's knife famous model, of course. Everybody knows about the bug out. Um, exotic materials available on this model. Carbon fiber, s 9 v steel, so you know, high-end materials. So some pride of ownership is available there. Subtle markings. The only markings on the blade is the Benchmade logo here and the s 9 v here. And they're both uh, sort of dark gray on the stonewashed blade. So they are low contrast. They don't jump out at you. Uh, I think as a shallow carry, the fact that there's a shallow carry, deep carry clip, um, makes it uh, more gentlemanly because it sits deep in your pocket, barely noticeable, sticking out. And the ultra lightness makes it very pocket friendly. You can clip this into the rim of your dress plan pants and it does not weigh them down and deform them. It's bad for gentlemen again, yeah, just slightly large. This knife, a little bit smaller, would be perfect for gentleman carry and perfect for non-threatening. But as it is, I'm going to give it an A on both of those scores, and so an A overall as an NTGK. As I said, if it was just a little smaller, it would be an A+. And uh, stand by for that just a little smaller, does exist. Uh, next, let's look at the KN rating, which is a rating for what would my knife nerd friends think of this knife. I think my knife nerd friends would like it a lot. The first thing would be they would pick it up and they would be shocked at the weight. They would go, oh my god, it's weightless. And then, having discovered that it's weightless, they would expect it to be flimsy. And as they start to work with it, they would discover very nice action, very secure, confidence-inducing lock, excellent steel, no blade play, just nothing to dislike, and yet somehow 
weightless. So they'd be very impressed. It's highly customizable and knife nerds like that, you know, make it your own. Change colors, change screws, change scales. And of course, because it's all about cutting, great blade, great blade shape, great material. It is a really good cutter. I'll give it an easy A plus for knife nerds. They'll love it. Finally, uh, the CMR, the cut myself rating, uh, simple. I've never cut myself on this knife, despite lots of playing with it. Uh, so it gets an A there. And that brings us to the end, sort of. Um, summary, it's a, a famous model of a famous brand. And it, it kind of defines a niche shell of its own, which is the ultra light and yet capable niche. And I just kind of distinguish that from a few knives in my collection. This is just an example, which is ultra light, but not particularly capable. So as the ultra light capable, I think it sets the standard for that niche. And there's a huge aftermarket for this thing. So there's all kinds of opportunities to you know, express yourself by playing with the design. For me, I, I like this particular premium model, uh, the nice blade mechanism, like the uh, the S9 the steel. But the real thing that you gotta say about this knife is it's just, it's ultra light to a point that's just hard to believe for a knife that feels so sturdy and capable. So when I need a full size knife, but, but I can't be weighing down my dress print pants, uh, this is the one that uh, I reach for. It's probably the knife that goes with me in my pants to work on pretty sure I'll need a knife days most often. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again.